Thank you. So what, what I've been presenting here is some joint work with Maria Naya Placencia and Bastien Visser. And so what we propose is some generic improvement of meat in the middle attacks that we have called sieve in the middle. So meat in the middle attacks have been introduced by Diffie and Hellman in order to equip, oops. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> so this uh, meet in the middle attacks they apply as soon as we are able to compute uh, some uh, intermediate value in the cipher u here from the plain text and from a subset of the key bits, and if the same value can be also computed from the ciphertext and from another part of the key. And so if we can do this, then what we do is that we compute the value of u that we obtain for all possible choices of k1, and we also compute the value that we obtain for all possible choices of k2, and then we get two lists like this, and we finally select the pairs k1 and k2, which corresponds to two values u and v, which are equal. And so like that, we can reduce the size of the key space. And one of the main advantages of this kind of attack is that they usually have a very low data complexity. And so what we propose here is some generalization of this attack. So exactly as before, we compute some intermediate value u in the forward direction and some intermediate value v in the backward direction. But now, these u and v, they do not correspond to the same part of some intermediate state. Instead, these u and v are some input and output bits of some function s. And this function s is typically an s box, but in the classical meet in the middle attack, it corresponds to the identity mapping. And it can even be a bit more complicated. It can even depend on some key bits. For instance, it can be a super box. So the only important thing is that we need to be able to store or to compute on the fly all possible transitions for this function s. And if we can do so, then we can decide whether a given per uv here corresponds to some valid input and output for s. In other words, we can decide whether there exists some input of s, which is equal to u on these bit positions, and which provide an output which is equal to v on those positions here. And so, of course, this attack works if the set of all transitions for s can be used as a sieve for all pairs u and v. And so the important parameter of the attack is the proportion of valid pairs u, v. So in the following, I will denote by this m the number of bits of u, so that, this, that means the number of inputs that we are able to compute for this s function, and p is the number of outputs that we are able to compute. So if this s function it operates on n bit words, then the number of possible pairs of input and output for s is exactly 2 to the n. So the proportion of valid pairs u, v is always less than or equal to 2 to the n minus m plus p. So this means that if the number of known input and output bits we have, this m plus p, if, it's, if it is strictly greater than the number of inputs of the, uh, of the function s, then this probability here is strictly less than one half, so we get a sieve. But we can also get a sieve if the number of known inputs, this m plus p, is less than or equal to m. And actually, more precisely, we are able to give a lower bound on the minimum number of bits that we have to know in order to get a sieve. So what we do is that we consider this code here composed of all words x, s of x. So usually this is a nonlinear code because s is an s box, but we can compute its distance enumerator. So this is this bivariate polynomial here, where this coefficient ai is exactly the number of pairs of code words which are at distance i within the code. 
And the very nice thing about this expression, which is named Macaulay's identity, it's that if we replace x by x plus y and y by x minus 1, and if we expand the polynomial, then we get an over-distance distribution here. And if the code is a linear code, this new distance distribution is the distance distribution of the dual code, that means of the orthogonal code. But if the code is nonlinear, of course, it doesn't have any dual, but this new distance distribution has some significance uh, from a combinatorial point of view, and in particular, its dual distance, which is the smallest integer i, such that a prime i is non-zero, then this is, in the linear case, the minimum dis distance of the dual, but in general, this has some significance. And we have proved that the minimum number of bits that we need to know in order to get a sieve, it should be at least the dual distance of this code defined by S. And moreover, we can also prove that there always, always exists some sieve which involve only n bits, where n is the, the, the size of the, the, the S function, except if the code is an MDS code. And in particular, because we know that MDS code are all, always uh, only defined on a large alphabet, if S is defined only on a uh, F2, then this implies that there always exists some sieve which involved n bits only. So now I would like to say a few words about the time complexity of the attack. Uh, so the general structure of the attack is of course very similar to what we have for mid and the middle attack. So we perform an, an exhaustive search for all key bits which are involved both in the forward and in the backward computation. And then in the forward direction, we examine all possible values for the remaining key bits, so the remaining bits of K1. And then in the backward direction, we examine all values for the remaining bits of K2. And so we get two lists, and those two lists need to be merged by considering only the pairs uh, which corresponds to valid input and outputs for S. And so like this, we obtain some sieve and only uh, some proportion of the keys remain, and this proportion of key is equal to pi, so this is the probability that we have defined before. So this last term here corresponds to the exhaustive search over the remaining key space. And so the important point is that this merging step here has to be repeated for every possible value of the key bits which are shared by K1 and K2. So this means that it must be very efficient and we have to use for that one of the clever algorithms proposed by Maria at Crypto 2011 or by Itai Dinur and his coffer at Last Crypto. So let's see how it works on a toy example. So, which is an, uh, a, an attack uh, on eight rounds of present. This is a toy example because present has 31 rounds, but, well, it improves the best known meet in the middle attack by two rounds. So, this is the round function we have in present. And so, what we do is that we provide a sieve in the middle algorithm on seven rounds. So, we First, in, in the forward direction, we consider three rounds and we examine all possible key bits except nine, because the, the size of the key is 80 bits. And in the backward con, uh, direction, we also consider three rounds and now we examine all key bits except six of them. And the middle round, the function which is used for sieving or S function, it corresponds to the nonlinear layer we have in present, so it consists of 16 copies of the same 4-bit S-box. And now what we get is this situation. For six S-boxes, we have that we know the first three input bits and the first two output bits. And so these five bits together provide some sieve with sieving probability one half. And also, we have three additional S-boxes for which the same three input bits are known, but now we know only one output bit. And even if the number of known bits is now equal to four, which is the size of the S-box, this provides a sieve which has sieving probability seven over eight. And so altogether, we get a total sieving probability, which is 2 to the minus 6.5. So this means that we have reduced the size of the key space by 
six bits or a little bit more. And actually, in the time complexity, the bottleneck is uh, the exhaustive search on uh, the reduced key space. So this was for seven runs. And we can also have an attack on eight runs by adding a round at the end, which is covered by Viclix. And so the time complexity then is not changed, but the data complexity increases from 1 to 64 pairs of plaintext and ciphertext. And actually, it is usually possible to combine this sieve in the middle technique with the construction of Viclix or of short Viclix in order to add one or two rounds. But the problem is that it usually increases the data complexity. And I will show now that in some particular case, then we can avoid this. So let us first see what happens for, with classical Biclix. So suppose that uh, we add, we consider one additional round uh, compared to what we had before, and then we consider all key bits involved in this round, and for these key bits, we consider decomposition which is consistent to the decomposition we use in the Stevens or Miller algorithm. And so what we do is that we start from the ciphertext, and then we consider all possible values for K5, and so we get several inputs for this last round, which are this value X, and then the backward computation in the Stevens or Miller algorithm will start from all this value X, so we will compute the values V here. And now, the second step consists in considering this value x, which is the value which is obtained where, when k5 is equal to 0. And now we, can con we consider all possible values for k6. And so, like that, we get several, several ciphertexts. And now, in the Stevens or Middle algorithm, the forward computation will start from the corresponding plaintext. And so, this big click here, covers all possible keys we have for the last round under the condition, of course, that the differential path that we are using in the forward and backward direction are independent. But as you can see here, this increases the number of plaintext and ciphertext pairs that we need in the attack. And uh, so uh, actually, the, the data complexity uh, can increase up to the number of all possible values for K6 and K7. But it is usually smaller because the number of ciphertexts here is limited by the number of active bits we have when we compute in the forward direction. But anyway, in, in most cases, this increases of the data complexity is a problem. And, but what I will show is that in some particular cases, we can avoid this and we can construct clicks, but which involve a single ciphertext. So, to do so, we have to consider another decomposition for the key bits involved in the last round. And in particular, we have to consider another set of key bits, K6 prime instead of K6. And this K6 prime is usually larger than what we have before. And in particular, it can include some bits for which we perform an exhaustive search in the Stevens or Middle process. And so exactly as before, we consider the number of active bits we have when this K6 prime varies in the forward direction, but we also need to consider the active bits we have when K6 prime varies, but now in the backward direction. And what happens is that if the number of active bits we have in X is smaller than the number of bits we have in K6 prime, then this implies that the ciphertext is mapped to the same value x for several values of k6 prime. And so if we start from the ciphertext here and consider all possible values of k6 primes, we get a picture like this, because the same we obtain the same value for several values of k6 prime. And so each group of transitions like this can now be seen as some biclic transitions from the same value x to the ciphertext. And now for each group like that, we now make k5 vary and compute the backwards transition. So this means that we get a biclic like this for each group. 
we have here. And the important point, of course, is that all these backlinks involve the same ciphertext. So we now have the same data complexity, but this, uh, the, the time complexity uh, changes a little bit because we have to compute all this backwards transition for each value of x we have here. But this factor here usually is, is usually smaller uh, than what we had before. So in most cases, the time complexity is roughly the same than the time complexity we have for classical backlinks. So we have applied this technique, the Stevens and Middle algorithm, together with this new construction of backlinks for cryptanalyzing eight rounds of prints. So prints is a low latency cipher that has been presented at last Asia Crypt. And uh, the important point, we, we, so it's an SPN, and the important point is that uh, it, it uses a 128-bit key, and it has 12 nonlinear layers, while the best attacks known so far are on six rounds. And so what we have done is that we have first uh, found some sieve in the middle algorithm on six rounds. So here, the forward computation corresponds to two rounds of prints, and the backwards computation corresponds to two rounds too. So this means that the, sieve, so the middle round, so the function we use for sieving, corresponds to two rounds of prints. More precisely, it corresponds to four superboxes for prints. And so like that, we obtain an attack on six rounds. And we can add two more rounds at the end by the Bicklet constructions, exactly uh, as I explained before. And this does not increase the data complexity, so the data complexity of this attack is a single pair of plaintext and ciphertext. And, uh, uh, but, well, the, the construction of the Bicklets uh, increases the time complexity a little bit, and this is the bottleneck of the attack, and so the overall time complexity we get corresponds to 2 to the 124 evaluations of two rounds of prints, and this is smaller to what is expected for, for as is uh, secure for prints. So to conclude, first uh, I need to say that uh, we have also applied the saving the middle algorithm to a few more ciphers, in particular uh, to DAS. And for DAS, uh, we add two rounds uh, compared to what was known before as the best meet in the middle attack. And also because sieve in the middle is a bit more flexible than usual mid in the middle attacks, then we get some variance of the accelerated exhaustive key search on uh, the full AES. And uh, a last remark is that it's still open for us uh, how we can combine this sieve in the middle process with some other existing improvements uh, known for mid in the middle attacks, in particular with the improvement proposed by O. Dunkelmann and his co authors at Indocrypt 2007 for this attack, this mid in the middle attack uh, on this. So this concludes my talk. Thank you for your attention. Time for uh, questions. So, have you looked at uh, other ciphers beyond uh, Prince and Des? Or um, no, well, uh, because uh, for, for for instance, for the large variety of lightweight cipher, for most of them, they have a very huge number of rounds, and so for this kind of ciphers, emit in the middle attacks, and even these improvements. Uh, does not really make sense. What we usually gain compared to what we have for in the mid in the middle attack is that we can add two or three rounds, but not really more, so. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.